Hey guys, this episode is brought to you by Amazon.com. To support the show, go to this episode's page on Nerdist.com and click on the Amazon banner. Then just shop as normal. We know you're going to shop there anyway because Amazon is awesome. So if you can, go through us because that would be awesome. Now entering Nerdist.com. We're going to make it. If we try, we're gonna make it. Touch the sky, we're gonna make it. Watch us fly, we're gonna make it. You and I. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Making It with Ricky Lindholm. I'm really excited for my guest today. She's an amazing actress and a very nice person. Is that weird to say? A very nice person. (laughs) You are. You are. (laughs) Miss Paget Brewster. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm great. Thank you you? for coming. I'm good. Thank you for having me. I'm good. Um, I'm really excited to have you on here. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, funny women are my favorite thing in the world, pretty much. So, and I've seen you do that um, thrilling adventure show so many times, and you're amazing in it. Oh, great! Thanks. Yeah, what's That's the nice. character? Yeah, because you you've, you've performed. Yeah, um, but yeah, Kate and I are like, we don't totally get it, and then we watch you and everyone else, and we're like, wow, they they get this tone. No, I don't, no, no. Sometimes I don't we don't. It. Sometimes we don't understand it. Really? I, I've, we've actually rehearsed. The, the bits. Yeah. Of the, it's, a, it's a parody of 30s radio shows, and it's right. called The Thrilling Adventure Hour, mm-hmm. and we do it at Largo with the Coronet. Mm-hmm. I play Sadie Doyle, and F- Paul F. Tompkins plays my husband, Frank Doyle. Right. And we're sort of drunk Park Avenue mediums, right. and we see ghosts. <laughs> but there are definitely times when I'm on stage, and I don't get the joke mm-hmm. until we're on stage, and I hear the audience laugh, and then I realize what the joke is, because it's a very esoteric yes. form of humor. Yes. It's Acker and Blacker, and yeah, yeah, I don't... Um, yeah, I never understand it till I watch it. And then I'm like, oh, that's what it is. Yeah, I know. But imagine performing it and then being on stage and going, like, oh, oh, that guy, oh, oh okay. yeah, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that I mean, right. that's just sad. Now I understand it. Um, so where were you? Where are you from? I'm originally from Concord, Massachusetts and mm-hmm. Cushing, Maine. My parents were teachers at a boarding school. So my brother and I grew up in the dorm. Really? Oh, you went to boarding school? Uh, you- well, my parents were teachers mm-hmm. at a boarding school. So we lived in the dormitories with the oh, students. Wow. And then in the summer, we lived in Maine. Is that um, weird having your parents as the teachers? Well, yeah. Unfortunately, I uh, tried to go to the school where they taught and um, and that was that was a pretty big failure pretty fast. So yeah, I had learning disabilities. I'd only been to all girls schools oh. uh, and this was a co-ed um, private boarding school. And, and uh, you know, we were not wealthy because right. <laughs> my parents were teachers. Oh, okay. So I had yeah. like, and I was a nerd. You had all these things. Going yeah. Everything was wrong. Everything. Was, was it wrong. one of those like uh, boarding schools you see in movies, like very hoity toity. It actually is the boarding school that you see in movies. Really? Like, is it the one from like, uh, what was that? Dead Poets like Society? A, or? Uh, oh, that, you know, that might, that might've been Deerfield. But the one with Brendan Fraser? Brendan Fraser was oh, yeah, shot yeah, yeah. where at the school where oh, I grew God, up. Middlesex was the name of the school. That's, it's called, what is it called? I can't remember, but he was I know. Jewish. And everyone he was Right, 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 right. That was the school where I grew up. School ties. School ties. Oh, that's right. yeah. Ties. Oh, no Good. way. Yeah. Oh, that's so intense. Yeah. Were there a lot of like uh, children of famous people there and stuff like that or just children of rich people? Children of rich people. Mm. I mean, like the heir to Fruhoff tires and <laughs> champion spark plugs and g- beautiful, beautiful girls from South America whose family owned most of South America. Royalty, like little d- future duchesses and stuff oh, like that. God. The... the um, what is she? The queen of um, Greece? No, Princess Marie Chantal of Greece. Wow, that kind of mm-hmm. boarding school. And and my, my parents put their money into um, education for right. my brother and myself. Uh, and so I had gone to all private girls schools until that high school and was just I hated it I hated it I girls were competitive in a way that I had never seen before and you know you you, if you were a nerd in a girls school environment you still have a place right co-ed environment you are that you are dog shit yeah so it was sad were you like this is going to sound really stupid, but weren't you like really beautiful? Like, no. were you like, you weren't, when no. did you sort of come it, You were like a late bloomer. When did I become this beautiful? Yes. When did you, <laughs> well, I know that's a weird thing to ask you. Well, cause you're so pretty. I'm like, no, cause like nice. usually like sort of like hot girls kind of, even if no matter what their personality, they sort of escape that. I feel like sometimes if they're like really pretty, but I just want you to say I'm pretty yeah. more. You're so pretty. You're pretty. <laughs> So, I mean, come were on, you just like you're, you're gorgeous and funny. So I'm assuming you were a late bloomer or gawky. I was or a super late bloomer. I think. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. It was just 
braces and knock knees. I was severely underweight. Yeah. I had gave myself a c- crew cut, like oh, no. just such a, <laughs> such a, and I appreciate that. I'm so deeply uh, thankful for that now that that's how I was as a yeah, kid. People wonder how hot girls are funny. That's how you start out. Yeah. It's rough. Yes. When you develop your personality, yeah. everyone <laughs> exactly. hates you and you're like, mm-hmm. exactly. nobody, nobody's looking no, at it's me. True. It's awful. It's true. Wait. So did you have like, um, you said you had learned, did you have dyslexia? I, I do. Yeah. 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 Does that make it really hard to learn lines and stuff now? Or have you sort of found a way around it? Um, it, it for me, it's actually hardest with numbers mm. and with, uh, writing. Mm-hmm. Like if you give me your cell phone number and right. I go to put it in my phone, just, I really need to look at it and then I need to show it to you and have you tell me if that's correct. Mm-hmm. Cause I invert numbers okay. and, and n- numbers look similar to like oh, sevens and fours look the same. Yeah. yeah I know. I understand that they're different, but, and uh, the letter L and T for some reason, I don't know. So so just, I will start yeah. right. If I go to write it, I'll write, I'll write T I oh. instead of I T St- just stuff like that. My, it's not that bad. I don't right. have a hard time learning lines at all. That's nice. I read really fast and my dad had, has uh, dyslexia mm-hmm. and his, my grandmother taught him at home how to oh, read wow. and write because it was, it was so, it was so difficult for him. Yeah. It's so weird thinking back like in like the forties or whatever, when, when, kids when people thought they were stupid or yeah. they thought like i remember my great my grandfather was left-handed and they forced him to write with his right hand and so he was always really bad at writing and stuff because that what you know because they're like no that's the devil you have to like the, the devil yeah yeah, the the sort of like, way. yeah it's like it's interesting it's like thank god we grew up today yeah yeah otherwise, and, and yeah. but even you know when i because i was born in 69 mm-hmm. i'm 43 now so in 74 75 mm-hmm. when i was five and six um, there still wasn't that much understanding of dyslexia, oh, mm-hmm. not as much as, th- you know, the eighties or now or right. the nineties. Now people so, probably get diagnosed immediately. Yeah. Be like, they get diagnosed for everything immediately. Right. Little kids <laughs> right now. And then they get put on ADD medicine. Right. Yeah. So I, I was lucky that my dad had, you know, my grandmother recognized it in my dad, taught my dad. My dad was a teacher and they, oh, they so knew. so good. Him. And you said you have a brother? I have a younger brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who lives in Brooklyn. What does he do? He designs packaging and artwork for uh, advertising design oh. for like Nikon and Nike oh, that's and cool. jewelry. So like companies. creative. How do your parents feel about having just like creative kids? Is um, that strange for them because they have real no, jobs? No, because they were kind of, they were really kind of the black sheep of their mm. family. Like mm-hmm. my, you know, grandfather was in banking and, but my dad's dad was a painter. I don't know. They, they're... They definitely were always very creative and they married very young and they're mm-hmm. still married and they, they had my brother and I young. My mom was 19 and my dad was 23 when they got married. Whoa. And they're still together? They're still together. Yeah. Wow. And they're great. And I, I, I mean, I just can't imagine them nope. not being with each other. Like they're, wow. I don't know. They're just so complimentary and they, yeah. they just work. It, it works. So, um, I forgot where we were. Oh, we were talking about like creative. Um, oh, they're like, very creative. Yeah. They were very afraid when I wanted to act. They were. When did you decide that you wanted to do that? Well, I did. I, I was kind of chicken and lame. I did attend for one year. I went to Parsons School of Design in New York City and I lived in the George Washington Welfare Hotel. Mm-hmm. And um, I was failing out of Parsons oh. by because I was doing hurly burly um, at circle in the square. Oh, wait, how did you get into Hurley Burley? Uh, a guy in my building was in the play mm-hmm. and he said they had lost their Darlene. I was 18. Oh my gosh. And so I auditioned and I got it. And did you want to act at this point? Had you moved to New York? I moved to, act, to New or? York because I, I moved to New York because oh, it was probably because of like a Levi's 501 jeans commercial, like that blue, rich blue toned, <laughs> everyone's happy in the city. And I just wanted to be, and I wanted to act, but I was too scared to tell my parents I wanted to go. And I didn't even think acting school existed. Right. I didn't think they're Juilliard or uh, 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 SUNY Well, if Purchase you don't know any, anyone know. who does that, then yeah. yeah. So, and I'd been in advanced art classes since I was little, so I knew I had to go to art school. That's what I thought. So sure. I I'm sadly burned through. They paid for my first year of college. I was uh, waitressing and, and hostessing downtown mm-hmm. at, you know, different restaurants. And, um, I, I, I feel really, I feel guilty about it that I, that I kind of blew their money. I should have just said, I did drop out. I finally right. dropped out in the beginning of the first year and said, 
I, I just can't, I can't do it. And they said, we will never talk to you again and we won't pay your rent and you, you're, you have to go back. And so I, I was panicked and scared and I love my parents. So I re-enrolled and I was in an advanced, like your first year of Parsons in six months. Oh God. And then I dropped out to do Hurley Burley and, Oops. and they, yeah, they came, they came to New York to see it. They said they would never talk to me again. And mm-hmm. then I said, well, listen, why don't you just come? And I also, because my parents are teachers, I went around to all my teachers at Parsons and apologized personally and said, right. this is not about you. You're a great teacher. <laughs> I would, I should have told my parents, I don't want to be a, a designer right. artists. Uh, I want to act. And I didn't have the courage to do that. And I, but I also apologized. it's good that you went because then you could know for sure that you didn't want to do it. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, it was a sneaky, manipulative rotten way to be in New York city right. and do a play and have my parents pay for it. But I feel like that's like, <laughs> so some, like it's so something that someone eight, like 18 years old would do. Like, I don't know how else, like, I don't know how people just go, this is what I am at 18 and being, like, this is what I'm doing. Yeah, Fuck it. Like, yeah. you know, Kate Makuchi, my partner moved to um, Los Angeles to go to Loyola and went to art school yeah, when oh, secretly she was like, I, I want to be an actress, but she just, she like, did the same thing. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that she couldn't say it out loud yet. She I couldn't just, say it out loud. Yeah. It just, it's cause it's such an outlandish kind of goal. And she was always a yeah. good painter and stuff in high school. So she went to art oh, school, God, but I'm at Loyola, I did and she not went know to that Loyola because, uh, two of the cast members of freaks and geeks, her favorite show went to Loyola and she was like, well, maybe that's how, and she said that on my podcast. So I'm not outing her. Wait, anything. which, who, who uh, from freaks busy and, geeks? and, um, uh, Linda Cardellini. Oh my God. They both that's went to, yeah, she read that and she was that. like, well, if they went there, maybe that's, maybe, uh, that's yeah, how you do that it. was her age. You know, I mean, like, being like, mom, dad, help me pay for art school. And then I'm okay. Like, well, I'm glad yeah. to hear it. Yeah. I, I feel re- regret that I didn't have the courage, but I was 18. You're so dumb. Yeah. And you, you're so and also, scared. And you didn't have like a role model. Like how, if, if your parents were both actors, then maybe you could go, oh, okay, no, I see yeah. that path and I can. No, Massachusetts, no. you know, old Massachusetts is right. you're a hooker. Right. <laughs> You're a hooker. Yeah. And it's, they were, my parents did come to New York, saw me in Hurley Burley and my dad cried mm-hmm. and he said, you're great. And your mother and I will, I hadn't seen them in four months. Your mother and I will, we want to support this dream of yours. We think you're great, which who wow. gets that? Nobody. And I That's- said, no, I'm doing this on my own. I don't need you. And I'm, I'm glad I did it. Yeah. I, I have since apologized profusely to my parents for not accepting their support and generosity, which no kid gets, you know, hardly ever. So, but I I did wait tables Mm -hmm. and work in a frame shop and I did all this stuff to, to support trying to act. Um, but I was singing in bands. I was too scared to actually, I would do like NYU thesis films and, and photo shoots for people, but music videos, but I was too scared to actually get into an acting class or attempt to get an agent. Mm -hmm. What do you think that was? I, I had, you know, (laughs) so embarrassing. I had been, I had been successful in my three high schools (laughs) acting. Um, and I guess I thought on the one hand, I thought, okay, well I'm going to do it like, (laughs) like share or sting. I'm going to, this band is going to rock. And, uh, and, and, and it'll be easier to get parts cause I'll already be famous. Like really not that bright for a really long time. That's what I'm doing now. No, so. that's not true. No, I'm just that's kidding. Not I'm, true. Just, I'm just, you have again. the courage to, you've taken acting classes. Yeah, no, I'm just you, kidding. Yeah, like, you are so not doing that. So yeah. uh, we had a terrible democratic mm-hmm. punk band mm-hmm. that played, we were together for five years Whoa. and never went on tour, never got signed. We were the band that would go into a recording studio, spend all of our money to record one demo with five songs. This was on uh, cassette tape <laughs> back then and never yeah, send it copy. out because yeah. we were like, our new shit's so much better. You guys, we got it. <laughs> so we never, we were, and it was a lot of fun. It was, they, it was, they were great times, but I still didn't have the courage to try to act because I thought, well, that's the ace in my sleep. <laughs> like, Do you know what though? I feel like that might work today. I feel like a lot of like, like getting into acting is like like the lead in that Tom Cruise movie was a girl from Dancing with the Stars and like you know Fergie's in movies and yeah, Gwen Stefani I, and I feel like now like that might be like a super maybe legit it's way to valid go. Valid now, yeah. yeah. Then it was. I I think I was just afraid to to try because if I tried and I failed, 
um, then where, then what would I do? Cause it's what I always wanted to do, but I wouldn't go directly towards it. So it, it so, and even I ended up getting into acting. I moved mm -hmm. from New York to San Francisco in, uh, 93 with my drummer. We were going to start a new band. Wait, do you feel like if you had had like a mentor or something, you could have avoided sort of stop, like not going for it? Like, what do you think it was like that could have like made you go for That's it? That's interesting. Like you had I had never no... thought about the possibility of a mentor. Like if someone was like, Hey, this go this way, maybe like open this door and be like, just walk through it. It might've been, I don't think so because I didn't tell anybody I wanted to act. Yeah. That was all just h hidden. And I, I wouldn't, talent that was too embarrassing to tell anybody i wanted to try to do that it's did you feel like it was like egotistical or did you feel like it was outlandish of, too outlandish of a dream yeah, or, yeah yeah singing in a punk band that's okay but, <laughs> but, but, but <laughs> no I, I, it just wasn't i was thinking in a circular ineffectual manner it, but i didn't yeah and i also knew that i didn't look like someone who would I didn't, I don't know. I, I, I just thought I'm, I'm a normal person, n nerdy, awkward, odd, kind of artsy, mm -hmm. who people will laugh at me. If I say I want to be an actress, people will laugh at me. Yeah. And so I didn't. People definitely laughed at me. <laughs> uh, when did you start telling people that you wanted to? Um, well, I started telling people like right after college and I, I made that mistake with like maybe three or four people and then all of them told me not to do it and that I couldn't do it. And I was like, wait, is this like, I feel like I'm like an eighties movie where people are like, you'll never do it or whatever. I was like, wait, why are you telling me this? And then I was like, oh, I shouldn't tell anyone. And then I didn't, I just went off and did it and I didn't tell anyone because I had, I had the reaction that you were afraid you, of. Yes. I had that reaction. Wow. People were like, oh, okay. Listen. But now don't you think now that that made you stronger? Yeah. I mean, it only did because of my reaction to it, which is to like shut down, actively shut down anyone who said anything. I, I put it like off limits. I was like anything in my career, we're literally, we're not allowed to talk about, or I can't be friends with you. Wow. Like it's, yeah. With my parents, I was like, you can't say anything either way. It's off the table. But what yeah. did they say when you told um, them, did you tell them or did I you did, just say, oh, and then the they way. were like, um, Oh, okay. And then they would send me like, look at this grad school or they would, you know what I mean? They yeah. were like, they're like, we, you know, in their hearts, they were completely supportive, but they were just constantly providing me with options yeah. of other things to do. It's so. scary. It's scary yeah. for them. And yeah. well, my parents uh, supported me emotionally. They did. They would talk about typing school and right. what about, <laughs> what, think about going back to college and you know, it, that, but I don't blame them No, because what you are looking at, you really are. If you want to act for a living, you're looking at a lot of, uh, painful, insulting rejection and, mm -hmm. and poor times and struggling. And, you know, it's really not that glamorous. Uh -uh. And I, I think a lot of people think doing it for a living is very different from what it is. Oh, absolutely. I was, I was telling Kate, I was, she was like, shut up about this. But I reread that, that poem, the road not taken, the Robert yeah. Cross poem. I reread that recently. And I was like, and I was just like, it kind of like blew my mind. Cause I realized like at no point does he say it's better. It's only different, only less traveled. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> fuck because i remember being like reading that poem and i'm like yeah in high school i'm like i'm, I'm gonna strike out yeah i'm gonna take the yeah. better smaller and it, road yeah and it just says that it's different it yeah. says it made all, made all the difference but it didn't mean that it's any better he could be saying that's way worse i yeah. don't know <laughs> no, that just kind of blew my mind <laughs> i was like damn it i should have should have read that more carefully you know <laughs> but yeah so you moved to san francisco to like move to san francisco to restart your band yeah well uh, I, my boyfriend was my, I mean, my drummer was my boyfriend mm -hmm. at the time. We'd lived together for a few years. We moved to San Francisco to start another band. And it was there that I realized I don't, I, I, I just don't want to A, be with this person anymore, <laughs> B, uh, be in a band. So, uh, we broke up and I was bartending and, um, uh, going to acting school. I'd finally enrolled in acting school in San Francisco. Did you go to ACT? No, oh. I went to the actor's lab, mm -hmm. Gene Shelton's actor's lab on God, was it Bush Street or Jones Street? Now I don't remember. I lived up there for like nine months and when? took classes up there in like 2000, 2000. Did you do, did you go to ACT? Yeah. Just, That's well, just incredible. for the summer, just for like That's the summer great. program, not like the grad program, but it was, yeah, it was cool. It's like a I good, like, a um, like starting place. So, you know, you can get your confidence up and stuff. I think. Right. Doesn't yeah. it, but, but isn't that kind of 
Oh, okay. Super wimpy. Well, no. Is it insulting to San Francisco to stay, to say I can start here? Because in my mind, I thought I will return triumphant to New York City. I'll be here. I'll learn how to do stuff. Maybe I'll do some industrials and some commercials and I'll build up a resume and then I'll go back to New York City. And it, and it was, that was pretty misguided. I would say that it's insulting except for the fact that it's true. <laughs> I mean, like, it's just true. It's like it a feels great... like a safer environment to, to try. Yeah, because it feels like you can, it's a smaller pool and you can do things like industrials and commercials and sort of get right. your feet wet without going to the Olympics of acting. Like, it's, I think it's okay to start in a smaller thing and sort of make sure it's what you want to do, maybe get a little better, take some you're right, classes. You're right, you're right. I guess like, I, I remember how sensitive San Franciscans yes. were about the comparison oh, yes. to Los Angeles. They and I feel hate I, LA. Yeah, I definitely feel a, like a. a, a a twinge of, of loyalty to San Francisco mm-hmm. when I think someone's I, look, I wouldn't, I, I don't think I could live there again. It no. was a great three years, but, uh, it, it, it's not for me, but it's beautiful. It it's is. just very political it's and people so are funny. always talking about their issues and that, that's just mm-hmm. not for me. And before I left San Francisco, like they were like, don't go to LA. No one has a soul. You'll die. Blah, blah, blah. It's a devil. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Everyone told me not to go. People who like weren't even my friends were kept telling me not to go. And Kate and I played up there this past year and I was, and I just, it was like the first thing I said on stage. I was like, so you guys like hate LA, right? And they're like, boo, boo. Yeah. And I was like, you know what LA thinks about you? And they're like, what? And I'm like, nothing. 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 They don't think about you no. at all. If someone's like, what do you think of San Francisco? They're like, oh, I hear it's pretty. Like they yeah. have no feelings. It's a weird. And that must anger you a lot. And they were like, boo. Yeah. <laughs> we don't like that. What? What do you mean? No, it's it a is. one-way rivalry. It is. It's the weird demeaning, like LA looks at San Francisco as, as oh, that's near Napa. Yes. Yeah, it sounds pretty. Quaint yeah. little town <laughs> For a weekend, Napa, yes. right? They're yeah. just it, they just don't. No, there's no animosity. You know, it's like, oh, there's that pretty bridge and yeah, yeah la da like foggy, right? right? Romantic, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And San Francisco has this intense hatred for LA. Hatred. It's weird. And so everyone told you not to go to. Yeah. And yeah, I had to do it. Well, yeah. here's the thing. This is what so what happened ended up happening was I I <clears throat> broke up with a boyfriend, dropped out of the band, was uh, bartending. And going to acting school, and there was a manager who hung out at the bar, the bar where I worked. I, it was a place called the Slow Club in Potrero Hill. And this manager hung out there, and I kept bugging him, hey, be my manager, be my manager. And one night, uh, I got him drunk for, you know, slipping him free drinks and strong drinks. And um, he said, okay, I'll represent you. I'll send you on three auditions. I said, okay, great. I did not know that he represented anchor people and hosts and oh. correspondents. I thought every manager managed actors. Right. I didn't think it took. Yeah. So now I'm 24 and I'm still not, not that bright because <laughs> I don't even research. So I started going on meetings with people who were putting together talk shows and they were looking for a host. Ricky Lake had done, had, was a huge show mm-hmm. and had made a lot of money for Garth Anseer and Fox and, was this 20 something talk show host. And so every production company was looking for someone in their twenties to host a show. So I ended up, um, making a deal with Westinghouse to shoot three pilots as a, as a talk show host. Oh, wow. We shot three pilots with different themes and stuff or. Yeah, it was, it was a typical talk show stuff. Um, they ended up picking up the show for local development. So we shot 65 shows. Whoa. Did you want to be a talk show host? Uh, it was fun. Mm-hmm. I, I figured, I really honestly thought that I had gotten a manager for acting and didn't know, and, and, but was like, hey, this is fun. I'll do this. This yeah. is great. And what I found that was really interesting was that A, uh, bartending is great uh, rehearsal for doing a talk show because your goal is to get the patrons talking to each other so that you can work. And you just, you're introducing people and you have, because I felt insecure and nerdy always, bartending I felt validated because I'm the person who has to be there the most. And so I was comfortable. And there's also a physical barrier and you're a couple inches taller than everybody. So there was something about bartending that I did for eight years that was confidence building and it translated perfectly into interviewing people. Because I had the microphone, I was the most necessary person, so it was okay that I was there, and I could ask anything. And, and I liked it. I really liked interviewing people and, and asking them questions, because I think everyone's, everyone is fascinating. Whether they're a good person or a bad person or a mixture of the two, they, everyone has a story. That's, Sometimes the bad ones are more fascinating. <laughs> yeah, but everyone has some epic 
or bizarre or surreal or fascinating, touching story about something, you know, failure, success, disease, loss, uh, family tragedy, like people are fucking fascinating. Yeah. So I loved being a, a talk show host and wow. we had a hundred person like, audience. Do you remember like the most uh, crazy episode you did? Do you remember like... I, the ones that stick out in my mind are we did the um, Miss Paget transvestite beauty pageant <laughs> and a guy who played uh, Patsy Cline won. And um, that was a lot of fun. And it's San Francisco. I love so the training shows it in was San Francisco. E- we that was my everything. favorite thing to do. Was the, the, did the, you go to the, uh, oh, yeah, the Motherlode? And uh, did you go see the... I don't think I went to Motherlode. I, I used to go to something called Sunday Bellini Sunday. And it was um, transvestite dancing. And then you drink Bellinis. Oh, fantastic. And like, yeah. And then there's like oh. Asia SF. There's also... I, I love that. So, oh, or, I think that was I guess after it's drag my queens, right? It. That's not transvestites. It's drag queens, well, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's yeah, the thing was, is that... Yeah. I like, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, because drag queens, they're, you know, now we have all this terminology of le- lesbian, gay, yes. cross gendered, pre op, post op, sure. like every, we're, we're clear on things now, mm-hmm. <laughs> transgender. Uh, but that at the time, yeah, at the time, this was, again, this was 94. This was more gray. We called it transvestite. Right. And at the time, that appeared to be acceptable to the community. So we went with it. But then we also did shows like, uh, we had this g- guy, uh, Gr- Mr. Green, I can't remember his first name. He was Mormon from Utah. He had 15 wives. They had 22 children. Whoa. They're on the show. So it was that kind of seedy daytime talk show, but we aired at 1.30 in the morning. Oh. And we won the time slot <laughs> up against infomercials. <laughs> we actually did really well. And so they started airing us again. Uh, at, at, at 1 a.m. And, uh, but, <laughs> it, but because the audience was, it was San Francisco, we had every age, gender, race, religious background, like everyone. And they were genuine in their discussion. Yeah. So There's such it, a cool cross section of people smarter, in San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't people visiting a city and they've got nowhere to go and they get, <laughs> someone gives them tickets on Venice Boulevard and they don't really know what's going on. These were people that were invested in their city and their issues and their people and mm-hmm. came down and, and uh, it, it was great. So, wow. And so you did 65 episodes? 65 today? episodes at KPIX, the CBS station. And then um, CBS bought Westinghouse. Or Westinghouse bought CBS. I can't remember which way it went. And CBS brought in um, their own uh, talk show. Uh, you know, the new president brought in his own shows that he had been developing. This this executive who now was the the, the president of Westinghouse, and all the old shows were out. Oh. And so I, which was hard, only in that uh, everybody in San Francisco who worked on the show, w- w- they were begging me to sell it, to sell it somewhere else because. They needed the job. They didn't want to move to L.A. And so I was doing a play at, at the Actors Lab and trying and coming down to L.A. and trying to sell this show that we'd shot a wow. year of to try to keep people's jobs. And I felt responsible for I felt responsible for them and for the show. And I was doing it with the former president. We went to USA Network and we met with all these people mm-hmm. and, and nobody bought it and I felt terribly responsible that that I had failed all these people right. who who wanted to keep their jobs and stay with their families and but, but I'm sure now you know it's like there was nothing the I could knows do knows why TV could, shows go yeah, and why they don't of like of course of course so it's such a crap shoot. Yeah. yeah so I moved here in 96 and I had an agent who um managed again correspondence <laughs> <laughs> were you still were you now, did you have it in your head that you wanted to do another yes, talk show? And, no, or, I no. told him, I will sign with you. I met him at the syndicator convention in uh, in Las Vegas where we were trying to sell the, the pageant show to syndicators. And he signed me, but I said, listen, you have to know that I, I, I love doing this, but I'd rather act. And he said, well, if you want to act, you got to get out of this because there's no crossover. You're done here. If you stay here, you're done. And I said, okay, well, I, I'll keep my options open. I'll meet with anyone. I would just want to learn stuff and have fun, but I would like to act. And I have gone to school now. And da, da, da. So he and signed me. So at this me. point, you felt like you could just say it and you felt... Yeah, I felt yeah. that I could say it. So I moved down here in April of 96. And that agent, I will not say who it was, 
was at one agency. And I went to meet with him for the first time in LA. Uh, and he's acting shifty and weird in his office at this agency. And I said, what is going on with you? And he said, I'm leaving. I'm leaving the agency. And I said, w w what are, you, are you not an agent anymore? And he said, no, 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 no. I've been signed by UTA. Um, and I need, I need to steal my files out of here. And I said, I will put them all in my car right now, but you take me with you. And so I carried files out to my Volvo and, dr and drove them to UTA and waited for him. And he took his files up to UTA and I have been there ever since. No way. He has moved on and he's right. great, but he did, he's, he's brilliant, but I don't, he did w w now I've moved his files to UTA. He's at UTA. The person who hired him at UTA got fired. Oh. So now my little agent from a little agency who's got three clients, myself included, has no friends at this big agency and has to prove himself or he's going to be fired in, may, who knows, a week, two weeks? Right. <laughs> so he sends me to meet with NBC. Am I talking too much? No. God. Yeah, so everybody says that. But if you weren't, like, what would happen? This? Yeah. Nothing. Just silence. Yes, no, you're talking no, better. No, yeah. okay, no, no, all right. Um, so okay. he sent you to meet with NBC. He sent me to meet with the the head of casting at NBC, and it was just going to be a sit down talk. And while we were there, uh, she said she we talked for a few minutes, and she said, "Listen, will you um will you work on these sides? I'll be right back. We just just read this part right here. I'll be right back." And it was it was the best friend part on Just Shoot Me. Oh. Nice. Which eventually went to David Spade, but at oh. the time had been <laughs> so played by way. had been yeah. played by two women, mm -hmm. who, w had been played by one woman who was fired, mm -hmm. and now they wanted to hire another woman. So, and it was Lara San Giancomo and right, other, and, yeah. before David Spade was involved. So, I read work on the side. She comes back in and she says, "Okay, let's do it." So I do the scene. She goes, "Okay, hold on." She runs out. She grabs this other woman, Helen. I don't know, and they say, "She says, do it again. Let's go." So we rehearse it. Now, I've had my driver's license because I had a completely uh, paralyzing fear of driving. I've had my driver's license for a week. I got it right before I moved. So they say, okay, follow us. We're going to, um, I can't, we were CBS, we were at CBS on like, you know, the, near whatever, uh, Hollywood, like the Grove or whatever, that CBS building. We were at, we were at NBC. And they wanted to drive to CBS Radford or something. Oh, yeah. So, so it's like all the way in the valley. We, yeah. We had to get on the freeway. I had to follow them on the freeway. What? They said, just follow us. We, we, we're going to go read this scene somewhere else. I was like, all right. That would terrify me. So I'm cr bawling yeah. in the car on the freeway. I've never been on the freeway before. <laughs> and I'm driving behind the casting directors of NBC. And I've been in LA for a week. And I'm just <laughs> apoplectically yeah. crying. So we pull up to Radford and park by the bungalows in the back. And yeah. um, I'm straightening up my face and they're talking in the car. So I'm, I've got time to, you know, clean up because I look like, I look like I've been punched. Right. I've been, I'm so terrible <laughs> and I've been hyperventilating and snot. Right. So they get out of the car and I'm like, Hey, it's pretty over here. Right. Trying to act like everything's okay. Follow them into the building. We walk in and it, they're testing <gasps> and I walk into the room and Lara San Giancomo is standing there and I do the scene with her in front of 20 people and, and they say, great. It? Nope. Like you just got the scene. Though. I just, just got the scene. And Jesus. they said, come, I step out of the office. This is all happening. I thought I was going for a 15 minute yeah. meet and greet. And so I walk out of the office and I don't, I have a pager. I don't have a cell phone. <laughs> I ask the receptionist if I can use the phone. Uh, and my page, cause my pager is buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. Mm -hmm. I use the, she, okay, can you do the, I call my agent and I said, Hey, I just, auditioned for a TV show with Lars Sanji and Coma from Pretty Woman. <laughs> and the whole room was full of pit. And he says, get in your car and drive away. And I went, what? He said, get in your car and drive away right now. I said, uh, okay. And I hang up the phone. I start to walk to the car and these two girls come running out at me and they say, whoa, 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 where are you going? You have to come back, come back. And I said, no, I have to go. I have to go right now. They're like, you can't go. I said, no, my agent told me to, I, I have to go right now. And they said, you have to come back. Said, Can I use your phone? I call him back, get in your car and drive away. What? Why? I think they might give me a TV show. They want me to sign this thing. Get in your car and drive away. I'm like, what the hell? He says, you're just going to have to trust me. Drive away. So I left and they're out standing outside of the car holding paper saying you have to stay here. And I said, I, ca I cannot stay here. My agent said, I have to leave this guy 
again, a genius. Yeah. At the time, you could never pull this off now. Yeah. They start calling his office saying, your client just came in here, tested, and walked away, and we don't have any paperwork. And he said, yeah, because she's in the middle of negotiating a development deal with Fox. She can't be... Where, right. where, do, you, where do you get off putting her in a car and taking her over to, to a test without talking to me? So, meanwhile, I've never met anyone from no, Fox. Yeah. <laughs> so NBC says... We want to sit down and talk with her this week. Before she signs anything, we'd like to talk to her. So now he calls Fox and says, hey, guys, listen, my <laughs> client's new in town, and she's got to sit down with NBC about a development deal you might want to think. So in a week, I meet with the president of each <laughs> network. And because I'm telling you, this That's guy amazing. was brilliant. Yeah. And what he did was he said, you're – I mean, I, I just went. Yeah. I just drove to CBS and met Les Moonves and – Les Moonves and five other executives are standing around and they're looking and they're like, are your people coming? And I said, what, what, what do you mean my people? And they said, your, your agent, your manager, your, and I said, no, 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 it's just me. And they were like, okay. And they've got a fruit plate for 20 and yeah. <laughs> they're talking about, Hey, and I'm nobody. All I have is a resume that maybe a third of which is true. Right. <laughs> Including like Bank of America industrials right. and a talk show that was on at one thirty in the morning. I have nothing to go on. And they're just like scrambling. Like it's we want her. Only, we want her. We want, yep, yeah. It's only because nobody wants to be scooped. Yeah. Nobody wants this thing to. So you can be. I mean, I'm not saying I haven't worked really hard and I I haven't trained, but at the time that could have been a Mr. Potato Head doll. It could have been anything. It could have been that chair. <laughs> would have gotten a meeting with everyone in town because no one wants to be out of the loop. Yeah. So I met everyone and my agent's strategy was cause I called him and said, am, am I supposed to have people? Right. Because people keep asking where my people are. And he said, I don't want you to have any people. I want you to go in alone. And for whatever, maybe from doing the talk show, I, I don't know what, right. uh, he, they all offered development deals. They all started wow. offering money. Wow. And it was absolutely overwhelming. That, so what did you do? I ended up signing with Fox. Wow. And then I signed for another year with Fox. But that was after meeting NBC, ABC, CBS, Fox. Wow. That is such a genius move. The guy is brilliant. Yeah. He's not an agent anymore. Now he does something else. And, oh, God, I think mean, he might own Nantucket at this <laughs> point. I mean, he's really smart. Guy. He's responsible for the development of... of certain advertising techniques that are now in every country in the, and that's the guy that did. I mean, he's brilliant really. Wow. And I was, it was luck. That was, that was that week was a 99% luck. Oh, yeah, there was that's no, for me to have the agent that's desperate enough to do something that dangerous mm -hmm. because he was going to be fired anyway. Yeah. But in his first week in a big agency as nobody, he took, me, a mean to me as a nobody and s set up a bidding frenzy. Right. So UTA was like, Ooh, we better minute, hold on this to guy? this guy. Yeah. Because what is she? What the, and what is he and how the, and yeah. I had a crew cut. <laughs> I mean, uh, who, that's not, no, nobody has a crew. cut. I have since discovered you will not get a TV job no. unless you have long hair, yes. cleavage, mm -hmm. and you're showing leg and you're wearing heels, yes. no matter what the fuck you're auditioning yes. for. Well, except one thing. What? Sitcom and the guys your same height. That's the only thing I've discovered where I can't yeah, wear heels. I know. You got to wear yeah. those little those, kitten heels. Yep. Me too. Because we're yep. tall. And I have flats now. Yeah, but yeah. if you're in flats, you got to show the whole leg. You have to be in a teeny tiny skirt. Yeah. You know, if you do a chemistry test, you best be in flats and shorts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because then the guy's just checking out your legs. Right. So there, you just yeah, made great. chemistry. Yeah, there you go. Boom. Yeah, look, <laughs> boom. Legs, long hair. Exactly. It's I true. know. Do you long have hair, hair extensions or do you just no, have No, I hair? don't. Yeah, I have hair extensions. And I wish it would grow. You do? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, this like it's like half fake. They're coming Where out. Where are they? They're right here. They're actually coming out. I'm getting them right oh tomorrow. Oh my god, that is like, the best job I've seen. They I'm kind of wondering if I should get them. They're expensive. Not that long, but I know. they're like, I have to. I'm blonde, and so my hair just like comes out. Like I just have no hair. So I, I have had to have no them. idea those were extensions. That's beautiful. I started working as soon as I got extensions. Pretty much, I like, would I pretty much lined up. <laughs> I had um, when I auditioned. I brought. I put in fake hair, mm -hmm. and then I would get the job, and you know, show up for a 
wardrobe fitting or table read and they would freak out and I would have my fake hair in a bag and be like, <laughs> let's use it. Let's right. put it in. And I've had, they've paid for extensions four times. Wow. Four different shows. I like, a, I like really long hair and, and I've been wondering if I should do that. I do like it a lot. I but think I might so do it. it's so weird. The hair thing is really weird. Like you can never have two women with the same color hair. It's, I think it's because they need the audience to clearly delineate who's who as soon as possible. Right. So you can have the Except black they don't hair with guys. The well, like all the guys can have brown hair, and they're like, "That's fine." Like I'm 24. Like I do have trouble differentiating some of those like right. policemen or like there's all these guys in charge, these older guys in charge, and I always mix them up because they do actually look alike. What you mean in real life? No, I'm like, 24. Where there's like all those older white guys. Oh like, yeah. Like po- politicians and policemen and captains and like i can never i always mix them up and i'm like they need i would be i'm not surprised no one of them should have red hair or something well there is that one guy that was on 24 who's got red hair who um you know he plays like a colonel and stuff oh anyway yeah anyway there's that redhead Um, so what is it what is a development deal for people who don't know that i don't Honestly, I don't know if they mm-hmm. exist anymore. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I have no idea. I um, think they do. I think they're a lot Might be more, more rare. for writers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was, and, and again, at this time in TV, all of the networks were signing up um, mostly comedians mm-hmm. uh, to, because Roseanne was doing really well and she had just shown up with, with stand-up comedy mm-hmm. and, and she was phenomenal and that's, that that uh, routine was parlayed into a successful show mm-hmm. by Carson Werner. So people were signing development deals, which was you agree to the network. The network will pay you, mm-hmm. let's say a hundred thousand dollars. This was the money in television has collapsed, but back in the oh, day yeah. it was a lot. A mm-hmm. um, hundred thousand dollars to sign with our network. Uh, maybe you'll book guest parts on shows that we have on the air. Uh, you will meet with writers um, and you will ultimately end up shooting a pilot for our network. Mm-hmm. Now, if the pilot goes, you pay back half the money they paid you oh. in your paycheck. So whatever you make for the show, half of that goes back to the network and they recoup. It's kind of like a record deal. They yeah. recoup half. Well, if it was a record deal, they'd recoup 200% yeah. <laughs> and another hundred. And then take but all yeah. the profits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I signed with Fox mm-hmm. And did a year, shot a pilot that, that got passed on, then shot another pilot and it was passed on. Then the following year I signed with Fox again, but this time the brilliant agent put in that I have to be able to do guest stars on other networks. So I did oh. six episodes of Friends and I shot a movie and um, two movies yeah. that year. And that and was then the show shot, to be on. Friends was like... Oh, it was great. Yeah. and Because that was like season four or season six or something. Like this is 97... Of- and you played someone who dated both of them? Was yeah, that yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was dating Joey and I meet Chandler and we hit it off. But And then Chandler and I fall for each other and and um, Joey and I break up. Joey puts Chandler in a box. I remember that episode. It was and then, yeah. He makes him wait in the box. And, then, and then I end up, Chandler accuses me of cheating on him with someone I'm in a play with and and we break up and uh, and uh, yeah that that was that was that just a crazy show was it was it like crazy fans and you know what was that like being on friends um it was great i mean you you for for when you're shooting on friends it's not going to air for months so no one knows who you are right. or what you're doing and i hadn't but they were really wonderful and and they had clearly been through the ringer they were like a little band of monkeys and they held on to each other and they kind of looked out for each other and but they had had clearly gone through a really big change in their lives because you know it was a huge show Mm -hmm. that that year you know it was huge and they were you know young and and suddenly famous and wealthy and it was that's that's a shock and they really genuinely were and are all really close friends so that was a great atmosphere uh to be around Mm -hmm. Those people were nice and generous and friendly and open, and that's not always the case in a situation like, like that. The, ta- the most talented people are always the nicest. I feel like, or the people you know, I think people so. without uh, anything to prove. Like everyone in that show was so good at what so they good did, at what they did. Yeah, they, like just untouchably good. All all yeah. six of them, and it's like well, you know, they they were really they, that really was sort of lightning in a bottle that show, honestly, yeah. and it was great to do. Yeah, and they were very supportive and welcoming and friendly, and you would. I was terrified of them. I didn't. I thought, oh, I'm going to just hide in this room. I don't want to. I don't want to get fired. I don't want. 
and and they were great. They were like, hey, come on, we're going to the commissary for lunch. And I was like, what? Me? Me? With the, the friends? <laughs> With Jennifer Aniston? <laughs> they were great. They were they were great. That's so good. Yeah, I feel so like I it's was always really a crapshoot yeah. if you guest star on something because it can it be was great. Terrible. Oh, I'm, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to find out now. It's been, I've been on Criminal Minds on CBS for six and a half years and I, they just started today. It's the first day they're shooting. I decided not to go back and oh, I man. love everyone on that show. I, I, I. I I love them. I just was getting um, ambivalent. It just it's a long time to do such a dark yeah, show and a yeah. procedural. Like, it's a- it's great. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate anyone there. I, I really like everyone. But my response to re-signing was, uh, I guess I, I guess I should. And it's the best job in the yeah, world. That's Nobody you know, should sign like, like no. I guess I, <laughs> I, I probably be on should. Term, because yeah. someone else will love it. And they've yeah. hired Gene Triplehorn is nice. is now the new brunette on the right show the brown haired one yes yep, of course. Brown-haired one. yes um so wait She's so great. what um so what was the next step after that did you do um what, what happened after friends like did your did, after did friends i did kind of i shot two pilots mm-hmm. for fox that both didn't go mm-hmm. then the following year i signed a development deal with cbs shot let me see shot a pilot that didn't go and then shot um then shot the pilot for a show called lover money mm-hmm which was me and Brian Van Holt and Frank Langella and Susie Kurtz. And then Frank quit and David Ogden Stiers came in and, uh, and, um, oh my God, uh, uh, Murray, uh, um, uh, F. Murray Abraham? No, no, uh, no, 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 Bill's brother. Jesus. He's the, he's the best one. <laughs> he's my favorite. <laughs> D- d- uh, d- uh, Brian, Brian, no, Brian Doyle. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> that guy. I that oh, I love that guy. Yeah. He wrote Caddyshack. Yeah. <gasps> oh, he was great. And I, did I, that show go? That show went. We shot 13 episodes, mm-hmm. I think, four aired. <laughs> so, and what was, is this like wait, at this I point? I have to you tell have, you my oh, favorite yeah. review yeah. ever of any show ever <laughs> okay. was the review of, of that show. <laughs> it was called Lover Money, and I was the rich daughter of the penthouse living uh, family in New York City and I uh, fall in love with the janitor's son and and the review in Entertainment Weekly when our show came out was she's rich he's poor who cares like that was the oh. entire review which is brilliant it was great I, I, I can't how do you not laugh at that that's yeah. awesome that's that's pretty amazing. so that got canceled right away my favorite um, quote unquote review we've had we had a, we had a YouTube comment once that said these bitches is retards. Oh no! And I no. immediately like I that's immediately so cut. wrong it's in so, three ways. It's so amazing in yeah in every way it's wrong and I like cut it grammatically, yeah. politically, everything is wrong with that. Chauvinistically, yep. these and, bitches and is uh, retards. Uh, uh, Poor assessment of talent. Oh, yes, yes. And I immediately said, Four ways and I was like, that's I was like, wrong. Kate, we're never going to beat this. This is the best comment. That is you probably can't, what, yeah. because the, in that few these words. bitches? Yeah, it's like, weird. she's rich, she's poor, who cares? That few words. These bitches is retards. You can't. You like, can't do better. Nope. That might be the name of an album. Yeah. I mean, maybe. That's It's pretty incredible. I was like, I'm saving this. Who posted it? Do you have the name of the person who posted it? I don't think so. It was like three or four years ago. Oh, God. But I loved that person. Yeah, I was like, oh, thank you for this. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I love that. Really is bad. great. Really bad, like in like reviews that are so terrible are almost funny. Oh, that's yeah. definitely that's definitely for you. That you can't even be offended no, by that. No, no, <laughs> because the person who wrote that. <laughs> we said the only way it'd be better if this retards had a Z on it. Like that, that would have been like it didn't, unfortunately, but that would have made it absolute perfection. Oh my god, that's but, so yeah. good. But um, uh, so so that show. So what are you? What are you thinking at this point? You've got you've done like a zillion pilots and like nothing. I did. Like, I think I have. I think I still have everyone beat because I've done sixteen whoa. pilots and five of them went, and then I joined a show. What show? Did that you was know? Criminal Minds. Oh, okay. Like almost. And how did that happen? Ago. That happened. Um, uh, I had done a bunch of shows. The last show I did was on Showtime called Huff mm-hmm. with Hank Zaria and Blood Standard Oliver Platt. And uh, those guys are awesome. And uh, we went two seasons, but on Showtime, that's like 13 episodes. And then. And uh, we didn't come back for a third season. And I thought. Uh, well, you know, if, if if you're if you're an actor, if you act, you know, you should be in movies. Mm-hmm. Look, anyone can do TV; you should be in movies. <laughs> so I told, I asked my agents. I was like, "Get me in movies. I want to be in a movie." Oh, and here's another thing that I did that I would advise any young uh, actor or actress to. 
um, because I've been at UTA for so long and it's a big, big agency. Yeah. Every couple of years I go in and I say to my film agent, my TV agents are great. They, they, I say to my film agents, uh, I want, uh, the agent that was just someone's assistant just on the desk. I want the newest agent you have and I want to sit down and meet with them. So I sit down with the newest agent and I say, I am a donkey. I've been here for 15 years. You get me a movie and you look like a rock star. So go do it. And I have their sole attention and they will do risky, rough and tumble. They're hungry. And so uh, that's what I do, which actually works. That's um, a great idea. It works. Just be like, are you hungry? Do something for me. And you look great. <laughs> like, you know, most people leave agencies every few Yeah, years. I do. I've, never, yeah, I've never been anywhere very long. I might leave them one day. I don't yeah. know. But anyway, so I had told my agents I want to do movies because that's what real actors do. And I did four movies in a row and was flying back and forth between Texas and New Orleans and Lancaster. <laughs> California and said, uh, I hate this. I hate living in hotels and I hate being alone and not having any friends around and not even being anywhere for more than three weeks. And I was wrong. I want TV. I don't, I don't ever want to live like this again. And they said, uh, this show criminal minds called and they'd like to sit down and meet with you. And I said, okay, I'll meet with them. I love that. I had watched that show. I yeah. like that show. Cause I'm one of those people that the serial killers, I, I know everything. And I think that's how I got the job. Because you had a like, when I went to sit down and meet with them, yeah, I knew. Yeah, they said, "Oh well, you know, for instance, right now on the show, we're working on this case where this guy is kidnapping girls, and he's, you know, got a trailer and a, his common law wife." And and I said, "Oh, the yeah, the David Parker Ray case," and they went, "What?" <laughs> they just looked, and I said, "Well, I, uh, you know, I saw an interview with the Dr. Stone, and how the hell did you, you know, they were." I said, I'm just one of those people. That's how I know your show. I read about serial killers and I'm a paranoid, you know, a conspiracy theorist. And I, so I'm one of those people that I think I'm, you know, I, I'm sure it's prurient and, you know, like torture porn or something. Sure. But I read all that stuff. And, and I think that's how I got the job because they, they thought, well, this is someone who's genuinely interested. Yeah. In yeah. What is the schedule like on that show? It's a, it's a lot. It's rough. It's usually, you know, you usually, usually the, the women start Monday mornings at 435. That's, that's, that's if it's at the studio, mm -hmm. if you're driving an hour north, that's, you know, you're up at 230 in the morning. So you're going to bed at 5 PM Sunday. Then as the week progresses, you end up going later and later days are 12 hours minimum, usually 14, 15 hours. And how late is Friday night? Would you say usually Friday night? <laughs> Friday night is usually referred to as a fratter day <laughs> because you start shooting at 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. and you work until the sun rises on Saturday. God. And that's as far as you can go because you've, you... you've had to schedule for a night shoot. Right. Like, how do you have a, a personal life? Like, how do you... You do not. Right. You do not. So... Yeah, I, um, you know, I'm friends with Matthew Goobler and, like, I, I mean, I barely see him anyway anymore, but, like when he's shooting, I'm just like, well, okay, well, I'll see you in nine months or whatever. Yeah. Like, maybe I'll see you. It's a lot. Over yeah. New Year's or yeah. something. Yeah. It, it's a lot. You pretty much only have, you know, I mean, <laughs> if you worked until dawn on Saturday, yeah. now you, if you try and sleep from, <laughs> from like 7 a.m. to one in the afternoon, right. then you have Saturday afternoon and evening to see people. But then at some point you're going to have to go to sleep, but then you have to go to sleep if you're, if you're, especially if you're a woman, they start with the women because you take the longest in makeup. Yes. If you have to be back up at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. Monday, now you're going to bed at 5 or 6 p.m. Sunday. Yeah, that's your whole So life. your free time is Saturday, Saturday night afternoon. and maybe a brunch. <laughs> right. But you have to do laundry and see, <laughs> like, hang out yeah. with, I mean, it's really, it's How do really you something. get errands done and stuff? Do you have someone that helps you or do you like? I did end up actually finally, um, uh, uh, paying uh, a friend of mine. Yeah. Cause I don't Cause want a full-time assistant. It was just, it was stuff like, mm -hmm. Uh, I need new gutters on right. the rain gutters are broken and the you house can't is be there to let I someone in. No. Yeah. So I paid my friend to mm -hmm. do it. I mean, I had to give her a raise because she got everything done like electrical work and plumbing. And I, I have, I bought an old house, 
um, up the street from Paramount because most of the shows I shot were at Paramount. <laughs> and I love it, but it was built in 1921 and it's... I, you know, I got it. It was a lovely price and a lovely neighborhood, but, but part of it is because it hasn't had any work done to it right. since 1953 when some unpermitted kitchen work was done. So it, it sometimes falls apart. You need and, help, yeah. And my friend got everything done. So, so one good. day a week for a few months, and she was out of a job. I was like, look, I don't want to offend you. I'm asking you, you know, I'm not going to call you my assistant. You're not my assistant. Right. You're my vice president. And right. I love you. <laughs> and I don't want to offend you. And you can say no, but I need help. And I don't want to hire a stranger. And, and you're currently out of a job because you didn't like that job. And I'm so proud of you for quitting. But if you have time, you want to do this. And she was like, yeah. You're like great and she kicked ass yeah it's like such a such a cliche of actors having assistants but i like when kate and i were on tour we finally got it we're like oh i i haven't gotten my mail oh you don't know two no. months mm-hmm. and i was like what do i do and like we ended up hiring um that girl mari who works at largo do you know she works oh, yeah, in the yeah. like, cute little girl that works in that she she helps us like occasionally just like every once well in that's a great good while. to know i mean if, she's, oh, if totally. you like her and she's trustworthy because oh, now my friend has a job i oh, can't yeah. get her back yes yeah, it's totally like it, it, on an as needed basis like if we're actually out of town for yeah. two months and we can't get our mail which is great we can't she's yeah. the one that let like time warner in to get me cable and got my gas turned on she yeah, like it's yeah, just because i wasn't if here. you're not here yeah you can't do mm-hmm. it and so that's why i don't i've never had I've, i mean that was the only time i ever had any kind of uh, 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 someone helping me yeah. and again she wasn't my assistant she was my vice president and she was it, it, it was I don't want her to do this for free. I want her to get paid. And yes. I, what I have is money. What I don't have is time. Mm-hmm. I cannot be there. It will never happen. Yeah. I will never, ever get that leak fixed. Yes. Because I'm not <laughs> ever, doing ever, it on ever. Saturday. Yeah. And if I have... <laughs> you have six hours a total, off a week. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be... I'm not going to spend it watching right. a plumber. Right. So I have to that was car heaven. Ever at some point. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, I would like a new shirt. <laughs> I would have to go shopping. No, I honestly... I haven't gone shopping. I have purchased everything on eBay <laughs> and Amazon for about six years. Yeah. It's so weird. Like the lifestyle of someone in an hour long drama, it's very different than I think maybe people think I, you know, I did yeah. your show for two days, like seven years ago. It's and I was hard. like, this is really long. Yeah. This is really hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, and it's also the material is really intense. I don't know. Does that ever get to you? Like how dark? It got to me when I first joined the show, even mm-hmm. though I already was like that kind of spooky, paranoid person who read about serial killers. Yeah. When they gave us the FBI manuals, that was, when I joined the show, they gave me the training manuals. Oh, wow. And uh, there are photographs of things that no civilian should ever, no person should ever see. Mm -hmm. And I went a little, little terrified cuckoo. Yeah. I lived alone in this old (laughs) rickety old house (laughs) in the hills. (laughs) (laughs) And so I, I got bulletproof glass put in all the windows. I have um, uh, this Pentagon level steel spike, uh, instead of cyclone wire it's like these spikes that you kind of can't see and they that's smart though shred you i feel like i would need that too if i worked on that show um so what do you want to do now what's the now Now, i I think on i mean i would uh, i would love to do a multi-camera comedy a sitcom but i there just aren't that many Mm -hmm. and and i don't know if they're going to come back to where they were before but that that is my preferred way of living and way of working i love procedurals and dramas and and uh, criminal minds and i love all of it but if i had a choice uh i would i would not want to be in that situation if it can be helped i mean i love working i love money i sure. love camaraderie yeah. and being so maybe i will maybe i will end up going back to a show like that i'm uh, right now i'm going to to new york to shoot two episodes of Law and Order SVU, which is I love, no, Law and yeah, Order I love SVU. it. Oh, I love it so much. That show like puts me to sleep at night, not in a bad way. It like turns my brain off. So I watch oh. Law, and, Law and Order almost every night. Really? For, That's like sex crimes. At least, I couldn't fall asleep to that. But there's something about it. It's weird. So like Criminal Minds, I can't watch to put me to sleep because it's like da 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 da. Yeah, that music. That's what it is. Law and Order is just like 
hey, ma'am, can you tell me? Yeah, where there's the courtroom where? scenes lull you. Totally. And, and like even I the interviews, they're like, yeah. where were you on Tuesday? They're like, well, you know, I Yeah, there's not that and... much desk slamming. No, there's not a they're lot of stimulation. They're really good. They're really... It's just talking. And yeah. so it kind of like puts me to sleep. Oh, like, good. Like I, I can't wait. Like fake news or something. Like it's just like, ah, yeah. <laughs> what are you going to play? Or can't you say? No, I can't say. Oh, darn. Well, I, I will definitely be watching. But I'm I'm super excited. And I, and, and I right now, what I'm hoping to do, I mean the decision to leave criminal minds was, was someone who is so excited about that job should have that job. Yeah. And I should be super excited about uh, other opportunities and other possibilities instead of, Oh, this job, that's just a cranky creep. That's and I didn't want to be that. So it's like when yeah. a relationship's over, if you're like, Ugh, Ugh, you got to get out. hang out with Tom again. Yeah. It's like, yeah. well, somebody gonna, would love to hang out with Tom. <laughs> exactly. <so. laughs> exactly. That's yeah. exactly how I thought of it. Mm-hmm. So, what I think is going to happen is because I missed pilot season finishing up Criminal Minds, I'm going to spend this year hopefully guest starring mm-hmm. and and also relearning. I, I mean, you get I am auditioning now for the first time in seven years, and I'm terrible. It's weird. I'm right? making rookie mistakes, oh, and no, I, I get, like what just like getting nervous, or? just getting nervous, but then talk gabbing with people oh. until right before the like. Don't even you don't even take a breath. You're just right. trying to show that you're cool and you can hey, roll with that. everything. Great, 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 and then you, yeah, now go in and eat it. So Ugh. I auditioned last year when, when I when I, I was on Criminal Minds, and last year two of the women on the show got fired, myself included, but we made a deal where I would shoot 17 and then I had a pilot out. That's so strange that you got fired and then hired for 17 episodes. Networks are so weird. Yeah. (laughs) They fired me and AJ and then brought in uh, another woman who, uh, on my way out, I was training on camera. Like I had to be the one that, I got fired for this chick and I got to talk on camera about how great she is and that she'll be a super member of the team. Like it was pretty kind of weird. And meanwhile, that was like an SVU. AJ's gone. When that Michelle Hurd got fired and got replaced with Ice-T and they had like a scene. Do you remember this? No. So Ice-T gets, they bring in Ice-T like the, like it was like at the end of the first or second season and Michelle Hurd's on there and and Ice-T comes on and he's like, she's like, oh, so you're the one who's replacing me and he's like yeah and it's this whole like weird thing on camera and i'm like that's gross yeah it's ugh. it's too weird when they do that wow but, so you had to train this girl on camera yeah just be, be like, like you guys give her a chance she's great and no well, we don't know she's too young and i'm well i'll train her and right <laughs> so i finished my 17 episodes auditioned for pilots last year shot a pilot that didn't go and then uh <laughs> then um CBS said they had another year and I had to come back and I was like, nah, I don't, yeah. I don't think I, I don't think so. You yeah, kind of hurt, kind of broke up with me. I don't think I want to yeah. come back. They were like, we're going steady. And now they're like, now we're just seeing each other, but maybe we can see other people. Yeah. No, 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 no. Like, it was get like, back a, together. no, like, it was no. like, listen, you're, we, I'm going to, I'm going to break up with you. I'll date you till, till your birthday. And then I'm going <laughs> to let you go. And then you can date other people. I date someone else. And then they come back and they're like, well, but you owe me. So we got to get back together. And you're like, no. man, I don't know. Now you owe me a child. No. Yeah, I don't think yeah. so. That's, do you so, have any? I, I did this. end up, I had to go back. Contractually, yeah. I had to finish last year. And right. that's why at the end of this year, I was like, I, I the blush is off the rose. Like, yeah. I, it did profoundly um, hurt me that, uh, and, and, and AJ, AJ's back on the show. Oh, and that is. girl they hired, they fired. Gosh, so they so fired weird with girls. every woman yeah. on Criminal Minds except Kirsten, and then they was awesome. That yeah, but wasn't good. she on a different show for a minute? Wasn't she on like the other Criminal? Minds? She was on the spinoff, yeah. right? And then was she still on regular Criminal Minds? Yeah, and the spinoff. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they didn't actually put her on it. That's it's always the girls, isn't it? Always. What is that? It's true. And it's like the show is doing really well. So I know. Yeah, I think honestly, what had happened was CBS had never seen our show. Since it got picked up, they just hadn't seen it. And then when they saw the spinoff, apparently, they said, get new women. It's just, we want some new women. Right. Like, for no. Right. So, which is crummy. I mean, I'm not, AJ's back on the show, Mm -hmm. and... And Jean Triplehorn has has joined the show now, and she's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And and they're a great bunch of people. And and I, I I think they're excited, you know, about this year. They weren't feeling what what I was feeling, and I I did definitely it it. And I guess that's kind of embarrassing to admit that I I have feelings. <laughs> I have feelings about this. I would <laughs> like feel weird seems... if I got fired. It just and what was so hard was. The, the hardest part was that AJ and I were 
and Kirsten were the most show up on time, know your lines, take one for the team, like so team player, like, and, and, you know, it, huh? what, what did we do? You know, it yeah. was just, it, it was, it, it was rough and it's it felt so unfair. Hurt. Yeah. That's just a weird. And it's like, who made that decision? Yeah. Like some random dude, I'm sure. Well, who, not random, but well, yeah, but some, I mean, I, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's I, it feels a little embarrassing it's, to say that I'm embarrassed that my feelings were hurt and they didn't they didn't like I couldn't I did do when I when they when they made me go back last year I did and at first I was kind of like I just felt how do you slap me around and then force me to do this you threatened to sue me because you fired me and now want me I mean it was just it was so ugly but then I realized. I can sit around and be angry about this and be slighted and a victim and be, or I can appreciate the fact that I love all the people here on this show and we have a really good time. Yeah. It's a lot of hours. It's difficult and we're sort of, you know, not treated the best by the network. It's kind of like JAG and NCIS, like right. these sort of <laughs> procedural shows that are, that are not treat. you know, there's no, you're not going to any, Emmys or you're not no one's right. singling you out for a fashion shoot like you're just a you're just that show and um but so I enjoyed it for a year because I really do care about those people and it made me appreciate it knowing I've decided I don't think I want to do this anymore and it was struggling with that for a while um and well I mean then maybe that's like a good thing that they sort of did that because then you can it's like, true. leave with no guilt. Exactly. And you it, can just it, like, well, and you know, I was over. able to spend another year, f f let's face it, uh, on a great job making money. You yeah. know, that's, it's, it's hard to, at the end of this year, it's hard to say, because that's a phenomenal position to be in. Yes. Of course. Chances are, I mean, just probability wise, I will never be on a show that popular and that long running in a part that I love with people I respect and care about ever again. All of those things coming together are very rare. Yes. I could be on a hit show with a bunch of assholes. Right. I could be on a, on a tiny on a show that no show one that watches. No one that, I mean, yeah. there's a million, you know, combinations to that. And that's a successful show. But and it's, it's like, hard to say no to a job. Yeah. But I don't have kids. I, I don't have to take care of my parents financially. I don't have... And I saved every... I mean, I drive a PT Cruiser that's 10 years old. <laughs> I saved everything so that I would have the freedom... To, to make choices that would be more exciting and and scary and but but being on a show that long you kind of forget how to act other ways yeah you just are that character and you really have to push yourself because you're you're so used to doing it and it's just also such an endurance game that's that's so interesting I'm I I, I this I have another question that um that it just brings something up that I I know a lot of people on this podcast have struggled with but you were saying how you felt guilty about feeling bad yeah because I feel like actors like learn to like uh have like two kind of selves like you have your actual self and then like yourself that like it's like your professional self where you don't, where you like, you're sort of Teflon with rejection, how mm -hmm. you like, how you're just like, and that pilot didn't go and that pilot, you get to this place yeah. where you can just like, and it's funny that like, like, how did you develop that sort of thick skin? And it's funny that you feel guilty about, cause any other person, like if they got fired from their accounting job and then they're like, no, actually come back. No, we don't want you. They would be devastated, you know, having to, I don't um, know if I ever developed a thick skin mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe that's, I mean, I have to assume that that's actually a choice somewhere that I decided not to. I don't want to not care to the degree that I can't get hurt. Mm -hmm. But that that's sort of why I don't want to be on that show anymore if I'm not appreciating it entirely and, yeah. and, and, and feel like I'm learning and excited. And so I don't think I did. I mean, I, I guess I don't. I don't know. You hear, I don't get hurt when people say physical like she's too old or she's too heavy or she's too what you know stuff about my nose is too big and i whatever, like whatever yeah. none of that that bounces off um but i have you know sh shot shows that got canceled and you're you're sad you had a good time and you're sad there's no way i can't just get up and go oh well that happened mm -hmm. so i don't know if i developed as thick a skin as other people and maybe that's what is essentially embarrassing to me that I'm this old. I've been doing this this long and you're not Teflon yet. and this lucky mm -hmm. and I'm not Teflon. I'm actually wounded by a dumb business decision that they've 
already rescinded right. and had to make <laughs> it right. Went, Oops, can we they have both of you back? Said, yeah. That was so stupid. We fired the other girl. Yeah. yeah, but part of that didn't go away yeah. for me. And I was unable to say, I choose this show and I'm strong and confident and I feel appreciated and good because mm-hmm. I didn't. Yeah. I thought, these people don't want me here. Not the people on the day to day show. Oh yeah, just the network. Right, and it and it was it. Yeah, I guess that's probably I haven't developed the skin that I think I should have, and so I feel insecure that that I've failed somewhere. That's interesting. Yeah, because a lot of people develop that sort of like crazy Teflon thing, and I'm always like, how? Like, how do they do that? I don't. Th- you, you must. Maybe no one does. They're just good at making it look like they did. Yeah. I mean, look at Conan going through all yeah, that. Yeah, he was going through like all that. He's Teflon. still yeah. upset about yes. it. You know what I mean? It's been years. <laughs> yeah. And I get it. And 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 I just I don't want to be that. And so I do genuinely. You know, I I that was a, a hurtful episode, but I love everyone on that show. Mm-hmm. I hope I see them all. They're they're going to be my friends forever. Yeah. I see them all the time. And now you're I don't ready lose like, them. Your like, next get, chapter. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about kind of learning how to act again because yeah. right? I haven't done comedy and you know what I mean? It's right. just that show is that show and you do what you do and it, and it was great, but I, yeah. I just want to do different stuff. Yeah. So, so okay. that's what I'm hoping to do this year. Well, I have one question that I always ask everyone who comes on here. Um, do you have any really bad audition stories? <laughs> like, it's my favorite question to ask actors because <laughs> I feel like everyone's got did, some like yeah. <laughs> really the shitty worst, stuff. <laughs> the worst audition I had was, it doesn't sound real. <laughs> it just doesn't. I swear to God, it was for a movie called Bella Mafia. Okay. And it was like an ABC made for TV movie. And this must be 10 years ago. I'm sure you could look it up on IMDb and see who got it. it um, and, uh, and it was the Don, you know, he's the, the, the mafia guy and he's got two kids and an FBI operative goes undercover as a nanny to take care of his kids and get all the dirt on him. And I was auditioning for the, the, the nanny, but they end up falling in love. And, and then he finds out. So the audition scene is him strangling her oh God. on the floor. <laughs> While she declares her love for him. Oh, God. So no, we've already strangled. got a problem. We've right. already got a series of problems. But that's not even it. I come in. I'm in the waiting room with the sides. Like, I just, I guess I'm just going to have to go for it. I'm going to have to be fearless. I'm going to have to really got to do it. strangle myself, get on the floor, cry, the whole. I come into the room and... There's three casting directors and they're all eating <laughs> cookies, <laughs> but like, like noisy cookies. Now I find out later that's illegal. They're not yeah. supposed to eat when no. you're, and they're like, is this going to be okay? Yeah. Can we, cause we didn't get lunch. And I was like, sure, go ahead. Yeah. I'm a, I'm looking how easy yeah. breezy I am. Zone, yeah. Eat a co- the loudest <laughs> cookie ever. <laughs> then the guy operating the video camera, I'm, I'm not kidding, has, I don't want to insult anybody. <laughs> He has two lazy eyes. So both his left eye and his right eye are looking at different directions, and I can't tell. And you're supposed to read with him? No, he's just going to tape it, but I can't tell if he's ready to roll yet because... (laughs) He's he's looking he's looking east and west right. and I'm oh, north. No. And so the the Catherine's are okay when you when you're ready and I look at him and <laughs> I'm thinking okay he's got to have peripheral vision. So I give him like a nod like are you ready? Right. And he's you know wall-eyed okay. and pissed. He's like yes. So I get down on the floor and start strangling myself and saying, I love you. And there's the crunching of the cookies. And I can't even take my eyes off the guy at the video camera. And I just, I, I started laughing and I, I'm on the floor on my hands and knees. I was like, I just, I just don't think this is going to work, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't say anything. They, they're just, the, the cast room one was like, gave me a nod, like, yeah. And the go ahead and leave hand gesture. Right. Oh. And just, that was it. Oh God, that's so. Where awful. you're just defeated. You're like that was really. That, I can't like, even. Please don't let me run into anyone. What idiot yeah. picks that scene? I don't know. My my audition for Criminal Minds was super weird. <gasps> what did you do? Well, okay, so I had a really <laughs> small part. I just was in. I basically had two scenes, and the first scene was like me in a bar, like meeting this dude, right? And so I had that scene, but then the other scene was just my death scene, and I had no lines, and they made me do it in the what? audition. No. Yeah, they did. And so my death scene was. I was basically. I think he'd like 
Not a death scene. You're in a morgue scene. You're dead already. No, 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 no. Oh, he's killing he's you? He's killing me. Oh, they want to see so, that. I yeah. thought you were a corpse. No, no, no. God. Jeez, <laughs> I thought you were in the morgue. And they're like, yeah, just, you know. Let's see how you do this. Yeah. <laughs> Can you not breathe? Okay, so you're yeah. being killed. Right. All right, that yeah. I understand. So, but, but the scene oh, is just basically, worst. I've been like disemboweled, I think. And he's he like put my guts on the floor, but I'm still alive. And I have to be cleaning them, right? Oh. And so I'm scrubbing the floor and I'm supposed to be crying, scrubbing the floor floor crying and then he comes over and slits my throat that's the whole scene and i have to do it right after being like hey where are you from oh cool yeah this is my friend <gasps> tiffany got to be blah, blah, kidding blah, blah. Me. and then i'm supposed to go right into this other scene and i was like what the fuck I'm, oh I no i'm I, so terrified I'm like, i can't do it i can't <sighs> just go from being like hey man blah, 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 to like bawling on the floor and so but i didn't, you got it well because what i did was like i was like okay there's only one way i'm gonna get this and like this is what i'm gonna have to do so i literally i do the first scene and then i'm like hang on and i just leave then i just like went <gasps> outside and i took love that you did that because i knew i couldn't do it. i don't have i couldn't people, do it no. i couldn't do it but i don't some know if people, i would have the courage to be like i'll be back in a second because i didn't know what else to do because some people have that talent where they can just turn on the tears and they can just whatever i don't and i was like i can't so i was just like i'll be back and i just walked out and i just stood outside for like ever I, I was love like, that I, you did that. I and then I just so came much. in and I was like not even on camera and I just crawled back crying and then just did it. And then <gasps> as soon as I got to where the camera was, I just pretended I got my throat slit and fell on the floor. And then I was like, thanks. And I just bolted because it was so fucking weird to do. I love that of, you did that. I'm so impressed. I mean, I'm so impressed. But it was like, I was like, I, otherwise I like this is going to be super embarrassing because it's going to be one girl after the other being like <laughs> like scrubbing oh, the floor like what an embarrassing thing to watch like, that's t- incredible yeah. i'm glad you got it i'm glad you were able to say i need a minute yeah i mean but i didn't even say like because i knew that i literally i'm not that talented i had to be like i'm leaving it's not in a don't minute. say that but don't or, don't uh, denigrate it, yourself by saying you're not that talented it's not that uh, you know what I'm Honestly, slower, I should say, to get to where I need to be. And on a set, you have a no, all day long. I don't, that's not true. Yeah, exactly. That's not that's not true. But but you're not immediate waterworks. I yeah. can't do it either. I can't just... Mm-mm. And I don't know if it's because... I, I'd like to think it's because I was raised in a pretty happy, healthy family. I don't have a well of tragedy to yeah. draw on that, uh, you know, I just don't. I think I, some people who do, who can do the immediate tears are sociopaths. I don't some know if the they're, best yeah, they're either mimics, they mm-hmm. either mimic human behavior yeah. and they turn it on as a survival mm-hmm. mechanism because yeah. they actually don't understand mm-hmm. being upset. Yeah. People who be. like, when you see them cry and you feel nothing because they can just do it. I'm like, Ooh, that creeps me out. It creeps like, me you, out. You have no soul. Not, um, they're not pulling on anything. No. Like not, no, for me, usually either, either the script is written to do it. Mm-hmm. Or it ain't. And the hardest acting is when the script is not good enough. Right. You, someone hasn't written a scene that touches you every single time. Mm-mm. It just is what it is. And it says, you know, copious tears. Yeah. <laughs> she bursts That's into really hard. Peels of tears. She's a puddle of tears. But beginning, like, yeah. Beginning as a puddle of tears. Yeah. What? Uh, I'm like, I got to go. I can't do this in front of you guys. No. I'm oh, out. you know what, though? I'm going too, in the hallway. I'll be honest with you. I, I have my own menthol stick. Yeah, oh, yeah. I will fake that shit oh, in yeah. a hot second. Absolutely. And I've seen people who can cry all day. All day. Good for I them. have done it. On When I was on Huff, I had my mom had cancer and all this stuff. And this, the writing was really good, and I could do it all day. But it hurt like you have a headache. You feel ill. You're depressed. I mean, you've just all those things. And you have to stay in in it all day. You can't get out of it or else because the hardest thing is like getting into it. No, I'm not good at it. So I will take the blower without apology. And I've also found that on working sets, nobody cares if you use the blower or the Mm -hmm. menthol. They're just like, let's get it. We got to get it. We got to get to lunch. We got to, you know. Yeah, this isn't for you. This is for the audience. Yeah, Yeah. they do not care. Yeah. Um, Okay, I have one more question that I always ask everyone, um, which is kind of the most important one. But um, what advice would you give to people who are just starting out today? Like, is there anything um, that you think you did wrong or do you think you did right? Or do you think, you know? I would say um, definitely uh, be in an acting class, get an acting class, get into an improv class. Um, If at any point you can help a casting director by being a reader, uh, you will learn so much from that because you'll see that every time you audition, it's not, I mean, 15 people come in for the same part. Usually it's 200, but say 15 people come in, 14 are really good for it. 
it just depends on what their hair color is or how tall they are. Or are they in town or, can, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's so arbitrary and you, you will learn that it's not like you go on an audition and you, you're terrible or you're perfect. There's no such, it doesn't matter. Nothing. It's, it's, there's so many factors that you don't know about. That's great. That's really instructive and improv. Just know how to roll with stuff. Just learn how, you know, cause that'll help you immensely. Mm-hmm. Women, long hair, push-up bra, heels, wrap dress. Right. <laughs> unless you're auditioning with someone who's who's shorter than you, then you got to wear flats. Right. Um, Is there anything you think um, that you would have done differently? I mean, if you said if I could go back in time with what I know now, would mm-hmm. I do things differently? Yeah, but I, I that's not really an option, so I can't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't say... You know, and I don't mean to sound like hippie. I don't, I don't regret anything. Of course, I've, you know, done embarrassing, dumb, insecure things. But I am happy about where I am now. And I've been very lucky. And I've mostly um, been treated very well and, and respected and enjoyed all the work that I've done and the people I've met. Mm-hmm. So I, wouldn't, I can't say I would change anything. I just was so lucky. I just was so lucky. Yeah, it's funny. It's like uh, almost everyone I've interviewed has had at least one moment that has like blown their mind. Like the week that you had with the um, with yeah. the bidding war. Like all, like at least one where they're like, "Can you fucking believe it?" But I feel wow. like it's like ne- like a necessary thing in order to have a career. You can you have you have all the elements, but you have to have at least some like amazing element of luck. Yeah, I think so too. And I think mm-hmm. also what's exciting is there can be a reversal of fortune up and down. As you've heard from all the people that you've spoken mm-hmm. to, you said a lot of their journeys are up and down. Yep. Just know that, that that's what it is. Yeah. There's going to be down, but then at, turning a corner, there could be a, a height, an accomplishment, a, a job, a, something that you learn that's so overwhelming. Mm-hmm. That's what's really exciting. It's not like we work in paper sales. Yeah. You, you know, there's no... This is really, and you have to have the the sort of the guts and the determination to to stay with it, and and that's w- why you have people who work for years and years, and most people are, you know, in the middle. People, mm-hmm. you know, people like we we go where we go and we do jobs and different things, and we're not Jennifer Aniston, but we're most people. Yes, acting. Yeah, and it's up and down. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you don't know where you're going to be. I mean, you don't know where you... You could be somewhere in two months you don't know about right now. Absolutely. You have no idea. That's the exciting part, I think. It's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the best part of it. It's awesome. Um, well, thank you so much for doing this. This was great. Thank you. Oh, I yeah. hope so. Oh, okay, no, it was, it was wonderful. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Bye. Now leaving Nerdist.com.